Hey, everybody, it's Paul from the Not Old Better Show. You know, when I first started the podcast a few years ago, I really began learning an awful lot about you, you know, my audience, and I, and I realize how much you have helped me, and I hope uh, I have helped you with some inspiration, some education, uh, at times, certainly some motivation, some information, and certainly some encouragement. And I want to do one thing right now. I want to encourage you all to pay attention to a new podcast that's out there right now. It is fantastic. The new podcast is one that I think you're going to love. It's called American Innovations. American Innovations is hosted by the popular science writer, Stephen Johnson. And Stephen and his crew are going to tell you some great stories, stories that we've already begun telling you on the Not Old Better show, but stories about DNA, which you've loved. Now, American Innovations is going to go deeper and further on some of that stuff. As a matter of fact, you will hear stories behind DNA and the mapping of the human genome. You'll hear stories about the rise of the personal computer, about artificial intelligence, and a lot more. But American Innovations isn't your typical science podcast because you'll not only hear about the science behind some of the greatest innovations of the last century, you will also be immersed in the dramatic moments behind the people, the places, the time, all of that stuff that leads up to these fantastic aha moments. The first six episodes, by the way, are written by New York Times bestselling author Sam Keen. And you can hear the first three episodes right now by searching for American Innovations on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to this show right now, The Not Old Better Show. Or you can find a link in our episode show notes right now for American Innovations. And while you're searching for American Innovations, I want to play for you a preview of the first episode. You're going to hear the story of a very misunderstood monk whose work with peas and salmon sperm, yep, that's right, salmon sperm, led to the discovery of DNA. So enjoy American Innovations. Check back with the website. Find the link to where you can find the episodes, those first three, but enjoy this preview. It's January 1868. It's early morning, and in a hospital in Tübingen, in Germany, a bearded man wearing a thick coat makes his way quickly along one of the corridors. He's come to the hospital laundry room. Inside, it's damp and warm. He looks around impatiently. Where is it? Where is it? Just then, the door opens, and in walks a nurse carrying a basket. Herr Misha, you, you startled me. I came to pick up the bandages myself this morning, but the basket wasn't here. Let, let me see those. To the nurse's obvious shock, he pulls the basket out of her hands and begins picking through the soiled bandages. It's a veteran's hospital, so many of the soldiers have old wounds that leak pus and blood, and they need clean cloth bandages daily. Sometimes they can be washed and reused, but other times they're too filthy and are thrown onto a trash heap out back. The nurse doesn't understand what he's looking for. What was wrong with the last set? What did you say? What was the problem with the last bandages we sent? Not fresh enough. The man has collected a bundle of bandages and is about to leave. Is it true you're studying pus? No, not strictly true. It's white blood cells I'm interested in. What are you going to do with the blood cells? He's halfway out the door now, but he turns. I'm going to figure out what's inside them. And like that, he's gone. The scientist's name is Frederick Miescher, and those bandages are going to help him discover the chemical building block of life. If Gregor Mendel had entered the clergy in part to continue doing scientific research, then Friedrich Miescher was the mirror image. Miescher had wanted to become a priest, but his father pushed him to study medicine instead. In 1868, the age of 24, Miescher starts working in Dubingen in southwest Germany in a new natural science institute located inside an old castle. Miescher's lab is in the basement in what had been the castle kitchen. The lab is roomy with vaulted ceilings, but with tiny windows that don't let in much light. 
Miescher once said that the gloom reminded him of a medieval alchemist's lair. In this lair, he works long hours at a large wooden bench surrounded by glassware. He's disheveled and his equipment is usually dirty, but he works hard. In fact, he works a little too hard for his own good sometimes. A colleague once described him as driven by a demon, and another commented that the impression he gave was of a person completely taken up by his inner mental activity without contact with the outer world. A few years later, Miescher would almost miss his own wedding because he started a new experiment that morning and got distracted. Those pus-covered bandages from the hospital are for one of Miescher's first projects. He's interested in white blood cells, and he needs the bandages because pus contains white blood cells. He's especially interested in a structure inside the cells called the nucleus, that dot that Mendel had seen through his microscope. The key are the blood cells on those dirty bandages. Each morning, Miescher washes the bandages in a sodium solution to get the white blood cells off them. Then he goes about isolating the nucleus from the rest of the cell, like it's a peach and the nucleus is the stone at the center. First, he uses warm alcohol to dissolve the fats and lipids, including the cell's outer layer. Then he uses extract from a pig's stomach to digest most other parts of the cell. In the end, he's left with a glob of white mucus. In fact, lots of small nuclei stuck together. Now he has his nucleuses, but he still doesn't know what they're made of, so he sets about putting the glob through a series of tests. First, he drops it in chemicals that would break it down and dissolve it if it were a protein. But the glob of white mucus is unfazed. Then he tries boiling it in salt water. Nothing happens. Then he tries boiling it in vinegar, a stronger solution. Still nothing. Then he really goes for it and drops the glob into a solution of boiling hydrochloric acid. Nope, the white glob remains stubbornly intact. In a last ditch effort, Miescher sets it on fire. This actually works because he can analyze the gas and ash to see what was in the goo. For the most part, the results don't surprise him. Oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, all common elements and proteins, which is what he assumes the goo is. But then one element stops him in his tracks. Phosphorus. No known protein contains phosphorus. It just doesn't make sense. Miescher starts to get excited. He gets more dirty bandages, does more experiments. And pretty soon, he starts to believe he's discovered a whole new type of substance inside cells. Because it was a substance that he had extracted from inside the nucleus, he names it nucleon. Miescher doesn't realize it, but he's just discovered the basic building block of life. What he called nucleon is what scientists today call deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. That was just a preview. To listen to the rest of this episode and more, search for American Innovations on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. You'll also find a link in the episode notes that will take you right there. I'm Stephen Johnson, and this is American Innovations the leaps of mankind as they happened. Yeah, hi, it's Paul again. You know, remember, it's New York Times bestselling author Sam Keen, along with science author, who you just heard from, Stephen Johnson, and it's called American Innovations. You'll find it everywhere, but as Stephen Johnson just said, check out American Innovations on Apple Podcasts. You'll find a link on our site too, but enjoy American Innovations. Hey, thanks everybody.